Money is not the problem. Humans are. I am 110% in belief that a lot of the stress, the struggles, the burnout that we have right now, that a lot of people are going through across the world, right? And within our own countries, within our own lives. It's not because money is bad or evil in itself. At the end of the day, money is a man-made concept. We, humans, someone like you and me, came up with the idea to create these dollar bills or coins, gold, whatever it may look like, to decide that a certain resource is gonna be valuable and that collectively we all believe that a certain resource is valuable. That is what creates money, right? So this slipper could be valuable if everyone decides for it to be valuable. And I would be the richest woman alive right now because of the slipper. No one else has the slipper. It's very hard to get a hold, a hold of these slippers or get your hands on these slippers, right? So it's just one person who decided this is how we are going to trade. This is how trade will look like in a modern day economy in our society. And we eventually call that capitalism, modern day capitalism. And this video is really a cry for everyone because I see how much this system is not working anymore. Capitalism is broken. It's not working and I think instead of everyone just running with their heads chopped off, continuing to grind and hustle and complain about being burnt out and the stress and just wishing that they didn't have to be on this ghetto earth, why don't we as a collective come sit down, be honest, have honest conversations about what we want the world to look like? How can we create an economic and political system that benefits everybody and not just the few? And so I'm going to talk about a little bit more in detail, like my views and thoughts on capitalism, why it's important, why capitalism is important, the pros, the cons, and envisioning something after capitalism. Do we think about what, you know, the, the issues with capitalism, how can we not maybe completely get rid of it and burn it to the ground as we all kind of, you know, a lot of anti-capitalists really want to do, but how can we work with what we have to create something better for the future that is going to economically care for everybody, right? And I think the main issue as to why this doesn't happen is because capitalism in essence is... It was not made to bring people together. It was made to divide. When we look at the intention behind capitalism and some of the forefathers who came up with these founding principles around how to run an economy, Adam Smith being one of those, a uh, father of economics who wrote The Wealth of Nations, and he kind of had this moral philosophy that we all should have free liberty uh, when it comes to how we live our lives and in the pursuit of that liberty, how we work, valuable work, running our own businesses, working for others towards a greater cause. And so that we can create these products and services that essentially will go into trade and that could be traded with anyone all around the world. He was coming out of a, a feudal society in the early 1800s before industrialization took place. You know, we had like kings and queens, the monarchy that was kind of ruling the world. And so the monarchy had a direct say in how people were able to live. So you see kings and queens in their castles, their high castles living good. And then they'd have like their feudal quarters and people just living off of them, essentially. And no one really had the right to go out there and choose what they wanted to do for work and or they could choose what they wanted to do for work but they wouldn't make a lot of money right it was sort of capped and so a lot of people didn't have that freedom they were really like everyone was really slaves in their own way and i think in today's society we're still slaves it just looks differently right it just looks very different and so my understanding of it is that he's coming from a place of we need to liberate ourselves which i totally agree with we shouldn't be limited as to how we find work and what type of work we do and how much money we're able to make. We should be able to have our own rights to private property. 
I should not be given the house that a king and queen wants for me or a leader or ruler wants for me. I should be able to go out there and buy the house of my dreams and the house that I want. So this sort of starts to create the momentum for eventually what would be capitalism today. That same idea and mindset that a lot of uh, people who stand for capitalism have free markets, the freedoms and the liberties to go after your dreams and and make as much money as you want and, and live how you want to live and, 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 and acquire the assets and the things that you want in your life, right? So we can't just say that capitalism is all bad. I think capitalism has a lot of good to it, but it was somehow corrupted along the way. And I think we've lost sight of what the forefathers, people like Adam Smith, initially thought about what cat what capitalism would look like today and it's just so crazy to me that you know this is why i became a wealth coach because money is something that drives majority of our decisions a lot of the things that we want to do in our lives we can't do it without money eat you need money to eat. I mean, you could sleep anywhere. You can rest your head anywhere, but is it going to be comfortable? So majority of us want a comfortable bed to lie to lie down on, a roof over our heads to shelter us from unstable weather. These are just basic human necessities and needs that we all need to just survive, right? Food, shelter, water. We need to drink water too because we're like 90% made up of water, our bodies. If we don't have water, we're going to die. So what really frustrates me, and literally I will like stay up sometimes in, at night and just like think about these things and how it's so sad or like I'll talk to my boyfriend and I'll have like hour long conversations about how upsetting this is, how we live in a world today where we don't care if people don't have those basic necessities. And I think when you create a system that humans created that's not on the basis of love but is on the basis of competition and disconnection and wanting up other people no wonder we're at the state that we're in today like a system that is not founded on love is just going to create more chaos and destruction and that is why so many we're seeing so many things fall apart we are seeing even people that are deemed wealthy and have money are falling apart. No matter how hard you work, we're realizing the people that work the hardest doesn't necessarily translate to being the wealthiest and the well-off. And we also have to understand that having a lot of money doesn't necessarily mean happiness. So when we talk about the pursuit of freedom and liberties, I don't think Adam Smith was just talking about how much money you have in your pocket. And I think one issue with society and humans is that we don't reflect. We don't take the time to go back and in hindsight look at what went wrong so that we don't repeat the same mistakes. And we also don't understand how we came to be a capitalist economy and society. We just wake up, we're in the world, and we don't question why things are the way they are. I'm someone that questions why things are the way they are. How did we get here? What is capitalism? What is communism? What are some of these other ideologies? What are some of the different political economic systems that have transpired and that have been born and probably let out the timeline of human civilization since humans have first been here? And when we go back into the history, we can see that trade has always been a part of the way in which we relate to one another. Bartering, you may have heard of this word bartering, is really just the trade of goods and services. And bartering looked a lot different then than how it looks now. Bartering never really had a third party. Bartering was just trading between one person and another directly. And bartering was really good. Bartering works really well when it's a very small population. If there's like 20 people, if there were only just 20 people in the world right now, <laughs> Right? And we all knew each other. We were like banded together in this little tribe. There's not much need for greed or anything to happen. We, we're a tribe. We need to stick together because the world is very scary and unstable right now. 
we want to survive as a human race so we need to protect one another and if i go out there and hunt an animal that's food for everybody and so everyone has that collective to work together to go hunt to to build huts to have children raise children and grow the population so bartering came into place when not only were you just one tribe doing that for yourself, but you started to come into contact with other tribes and you realize that sometimes other tribes had things that you didn't have. It's like this beautiful exchange. I give, you take. I give in order to also receive. I can use any other example, like apples and oranges. I have apples, I just want your oranges. You have oranges, you want my apples, so we're gonna trade. The issue with bartering as populations start to get bigger is that not everybody needs or wants what you have. And so we have this issue where there's no collective resource or thing that we all value. And so you can be waiting days, months for someone to show up with something that you want. And then you also have to make sure that they, they want something that you have. And so what if they don't? So this is where money comes into play. This is... And this is why I say money is not evil. It, it depends on how you look at things and how you angle things because money is a necessity. We need this third item that everyone decides to value so that we can all work for that third item to then exchange and then use that third item to also buy the things that we want. And so this is kind of when bartering kind of slowly played out and we start to see these different variations of monetary systems. And it has looked different over the years, right? From cow shells to obviously the ones, the most recent ones like silver and gold and these precious metals that a lot of people still purchase and, and store, right? And to now even like crypto and looking at digital currency and Bitcoin, if we all decided that Bitcoin was gonna be valuable and cash money wasn't anymore, we could do that, right? So it's like money is always, the idea of money is always changing, but the principle is the same thing. It is a means for, for trade. And a, a third party value system in which we can all agree on so that we can all get the things that we want and need and feel economically resourced. So now that that's out of the way and you learned about that, <laughs> once I understood that, I was like, wow, like money really isn't evil. Like if anything, it's actually such a beautiful idea and a conception. And humans naturally, we always want to progress. We want to be better versions of ourselves and for the collective. And that was just one of those examples of birthing something that helped humanity to really grow and to work with each other you know, to team up with each other, to find value in one common thing so that we can go farther together. And so because of this creation and desire for growth, it has led us to where we are today, right? And our society has grown because of industrialization. It has grown so much faster within these like past two centuries than ever before. The growth that we were seeing in the past 100 to 200 years has never been seen ever in human history ever ever so we are growing so fast that we don't even know what we're doing we some people will argue that we are growing too fast we're getting really carried away now with the wealth and the success that some of these nations around the world have acquired and this comes to my point that growth does not always equal success and it's something that i've learned in my own personal life taking a gap year getting burnt out in my business dealing with health issues I realized that like, wow, like health also is your wealth. Like wealth isn't just about money and how much money you have in your pocket and your bank account. Like it is a lot of other things too. And when we look at wealth from just a place of just money and acquiring money, not for like taking care of our basic needs, but to have the like superficial things that like don't really guarantee happiness. I think that's where, that's where sickness, sickness begins in the heart and in the mind and the body. For everyone and growth at the expense of the quality of life for all and for ourselves is not an act of love and it creates a disconnection and so 
this kind of is my main point today as to like why capitalism is not working for anyone because it is a system that was in essence it was the intention to create liberty for all but the basis of it was still based on disconnection and competition it wasn't based on love and like how can we pool resources together it was based on i'm gonna let everyone fend for themselves and those that end up not having anything oh well somehow it will balance out on its own and if it doesn't then like governments have to come into play and everything's going to be kosher and it's going to be good and we're realizing right now that like that's not the case the one percent the one percent are getting wealthier every day while everyone else is getting poor and that's not how it was supposed to work it's supposed to be that wealthy people are supposed to give back to their communities and wealthy people we are seeing that with the jeff bezos and elon musk like these large massive companies making billions of dollars while the people that work for them are still struggling this is why so many of these companies you'll, you'll, you'll see that there are, there are groups of people who work for these companies that are going on strike asking for more pay to me it makes me so sad like if i'm someone that had a billion dollars today there should be no reason why the people that work for me are struggling I cannot comprehend why I would need a billion dollars and be happy with having a billion dollars and living my life and yachts and jets. And I'm not saying that any of those things are bad if you want it, but like, how can I be happy enjoying those things, knowing that the people that work for me are struggling to feed their family or they're about to lose their home or they can't put food on the table? What kind of CEO am I? What kind of entrepreneur I am I to have the privilege to have so much wealth and to not care about feeding my own and this is why I say there's such a disconnection in the world today it creates capitalism is it has created this environment for greed and fear and those are the two emotions two worst emotions for humans to have because it it it, it feeds off of that disconnection when there's fear that if you, if someone else eats, you're not going to eat, you're not going to want the other person to eat. Resources are becoming scarce. No, I got to feed my family first before I feed yours at the end of the day, period. So it breeds this fear, the scarcity, like there's not enough resources for everyone when really there is. They make it seem like there isn't, but there is enough resources for everyone. And then greed. You just want more, right? Now you're on your high horse. You're making so much money. You want more. It's not enough. When you see the, the doors that money can, can, can open up for you, you want more of it, not because of how it's going to help other people. You want more of it because of how it's going to serve you and your own selfish interests and desires. And if you don't have anything to keep that in check, it's going to become pretty chaotic. Things are going to get out of control. Who is there to, like anything in life, there has to be a law. There has, there has to be laws in place so that we don't wreck disaster or that, you know, people don't implode on themselves. If we just let everyone go out there and just kill anyone and there was no consequence for it, there wouldn't be a lot of people here today. So there are reasons why we have laws in place systems in place to keep things in order and when you don't have a body or some institution or organization or individual or someone to keep things in order things are going to become chaotic capitalism it, it, it invigorates the ego and it makes us believe that we are better than one another that someone is more special someone is more deserving someone is and i do believe we are all equal but in a capitalist system we're not all equal. And this is why I say the more you participate in a system like this, the harder it is to get out because it really becomes a you versus them. It's a dog eats dog world. It's either you're rich or you're poor. Get into whichever camp and you got to do whatever it takes. And the issue now why capitalism is really at its tipping point is because now it's not even about whatever it takes. And so I think we need to start thinking about wealth and abundance from a collective point of view. When I look outside and I see 
children playing or someone walking with their dog, I literally think like, wow, I could have, that person could have been my father, that person could have been my mother, that person could have been my brother or my sister. Like, I tear up about these things because I don't think people see each other in those ways. Like, I have the amazing parents and family that I have, but I was gifted that. And I could have been gifted another family, right? I I could have been your brother. I could have been your sister. And so when I look at people, that's that's how I look at people. I look at people as if you are my brother and my sister and you are my family. And I want the best for you. Even if I maybe don't personally know you and you're anonymous to me, I treat you as if you were my brother and my sister. And this is why I'm saying that's, that, that's, that's really what love is all about. And so much of us, so many people don't have that. They're missing that. We, we forget what love looks like. The system has really broken us down. It has removed us from our soul blueprint and our purpose for being here. And I know it's like, you know, I don't want to get into this whole like utopia idealistic frame of mind, but like we should work towards that. We should never just accept the bare minimum. I'm not saying that the world is ever going to be perfect and there's never going to be poor people and that there shouldn't be rich people. I believe in duality as well, too. I'm going to be realistic and understand that there's always going to be good and bad. No matter what you do in the world, there's always going to be good and bad people. And actually, if you think about it, everyone has a little bit of good and bad in them. Everyone has their flaws. Everyone has their strengths and then their weaknesses. Some people are probably a bit more bad than others, right? We can admit to that. And some people are like really, really saints. They have a lot of good in them and it's really hard to find a lot of flaws. But we all, even me, I'm not perfect either. We've all made our mistakes. We all learn from them. Some of us, we don't. But most of the time, you know, like we should strive to learn from them and to become better individuals. So, like I said, to kind of understand why we are where we're at today, we have to understand, like, what is capitalism? So, we understand, like, what potentially led to capitalism, like, the ideas and the concepts behind, like, needing to pool money together or to have one common valuable resource that we, that, that, that we all deem we want to trade with, right? So, now we're kind of moving into, like, okay, what is capitalism, what is it supposed to stand for and mean? So I kind of talked about it a bit already. So capitalism is an economic and political system in which a country's trade, I'm going to read it, trade and industry are controlled by private owners for profit rather than by the state. And this is taken off of Oxford Dictionary. This can lead to, the downsides to this, I believe, can lead to corporatocracies and monopolies because now companies can become greedy especially if they don't feel like they have to redistribute their wealth and especially if governments are not forcing them to redistribute their wealth then they can just keep growing and making making more and more and more and more and just doing whatever the hell they want as people become poor and communism because communism is always seen as a stark opposite of capitalism so i also want to like touch on that a bit too like what is communism because sometimes we have to understand other systems to understand why we have capitalism and why we don't have those other systems anymore and why they never worked. So communism is a theory or a system of social organization in which all property is owned by the community and each person contributes and receives according to their ability and needs. So it kind of sounds like actually what I want, right? In respects. Like if you think about it, like everyone's basic needs should be taken care of. I 110% believe that. I don't care if you disagree I need you to question why. <laughs> like, the fact that you don't care about other people's needs being met and only your own has a lot of narcissistic elements to it. So, and it's not coming from a place of love. Because if you're coming from a place of love, you're going to care about everyone and anyone, period. You're going to care about basic humans and humanity. So, to me, I've kind of always leaned a little bit more to, like, I, so I can't say I lean towards more than one than the other. I think in the past, without understanding capitalism, I leaned more towards communism because I was like, oh, I just love this idea that like, yes, like burn down the idea of people being like rich and wealthy and like we should all be on the same level playing field when it comes to like money and, and, and having wealth. But then I realized that communism also introduces the control of government and government is in, is in control 100% of the time. And that's something that I don't agree with. And that is why capitalism kind of is the opposite of that because capitalism is like limit the amount of government as much as possible in people's 
economic affairs and communism is like no let the governments manage people's money let the government tell you where all your money is gonna go and and house you and feed you you don't have to worry about any of that but you don't have as much freedom and rights so you're kind of giving up one for the other and this is why I'm saying we need to have the conversation as to what it looks like beyond that. How can we maybe combine the two or not even combine the two? Because we know that both of them don't work in their own rights. They have some pros, but there are also cons. So how can we look at both systems and create a new system that allows people to have the flexibility to, first and foremost, everyone's basic needs are covered. That's not a question. But I still believe that people should be able to have more money than others, right? People should be able to choose what they want to do for their professions. People should be able to choose what kind of house they want to live in, what they do with their money and where they travel. That, I believe, is important. You can't take that from somebody. So I, I truly see the benefits and the goldmine in both systems. And I also see why both of them don't work. And we're seeing right now why capitalism does not work. And it has been totally corrupted and really for capitalism to work rich people have to redistribute their wealth and they're not doing that why are corporations getting more benefits than individual human beings everyone should be taken care of i'm not saying you can't run your business and make your big bucks and go live in your mansions but that to me is disconnection because one why are you living in a house with 30 rooms and nobody's in these rooms and there's people on the streets that are literally sleeping on the bare ground nowhere to stay they could be staying in one of your rooms you don't let them stay in one of your rooms why not right question like so it's becoming a nightmare we we're in a system that is supposed to work in theory capitalism is supposed to work in theory if people redistribute their wealth if corporations and rich wealthy individuals redistribute their wealth but nobody wants to do that and instead we actually have rich people wealthy people i've heard people like elon musk saying like it's just because people don't work hard how dare you how dare you say that people it's because people aren't working hard why they are in the position that you are in you're not accounting for systems of oppression you're a white male you have a lot of things handed to you that a lot of people of color a lot of people who aren't a man won't equally have access to. So when we talk about even sometimes the word like manifestation, and I understand sometimes it triggers people because it's like, well, really, why are you in the position that you're in? What advantages did you have in your life that put you ahead of someone else? So we need to be very mindful of that. And we understand that capitalism was really the wealth of the nations today was built off of slavery and black people. So these are things that people don't want to talk about. And actually, um, Smith, so I've been doing a lot of research on this because I'm really, I really need to read his book because he is one of the founding philosophers, the fathers of, of, of economics. And he, he's kind of birthed into today what looks like capitalism. He didn't create capitalism, but his ideas led to the foundations of what it is today. And when he wrote The Wealth of Nations, he believed that every man had the right to economic liberty and freedoms and that there should be a system in place where humans have the right to property and could be led by an invisible hand. This invisible hand was competition. He was saying that people are going to be motivated when resources are scarce, when they realize they have to fend for themselves, to spur on trade and growth. But Smith was also, I was really interested to see this and to read this, was an outspoken critic of slavery. He saw slavery as morally repugnant and economically unproductive because he saw it as people relying on another race of people to get rich. Really, that's literally what it was. And that people didn't have to work hard to really get what they wanted. You know, you, you have free, free, free labor. You, like, you don't have to redistribute your wealth at all. These people are working for you for free. So you just amass and amass and amass and amass all that wealth. So Adam Smith saw the potential for capitalism to be corrupt, but he thought humans were way too nice to do that. He didn't realize that, he thought that laws would naturally balance things out through government. And so here's the issue that we have today. I, you know, I hope this is flowing because I feel like my mind's all over the place. It's very hard to talk about this because there's just so many large concepts and things to understand and ideas. 
and I'm trying to do this within a short amount of time, but capitalism also doesn't just work because corporations are greedy. We have to talk about why corporations are allowed to be greedy and not redistribute their wealth. And that is because of governments. The same government that's supposed to be a third party, that's supposed to be protecting the everyday citizens and ensuring that people redistribute their wealth, corporations and rich and wealthy people are not. Instead, we're noticing that these governments are for the wealthy people and that these governments are corrupt themselves. And the only way that capitalism can be fixed today is if we find some system in place to hold wealthy and corporate individuals accountable. It's, it's, that's not the only solution because we can go into talking about, well, you know, governments too. If governments have too much of a hand, then they're going to tell you what they're going to do with that money that they get from rich people. And maybe I don't want the money that they take from rich people to go to this or go to that. But I think the focus should be on whatever money that we redistribute, that should be going towards making sure everyone can eat and everyone has a roof over their head, period. I always tell the story when I went to Cuba, Cuba is known as like more of a socialist country. It's not communist. They never call themselves communists. America just wants to call themselves communists, call them communists to make them look bad, but they're socialists. They believe that everybody should have the right to everything. So when you go to Cuba, everyone has access to go to school. They can go to university for free. Healthcare is free. All the public services, government funded services are free. Even housing, subsidized housing. Everyone, everyone is living under a roof in Cuba. There is no, when I went to Cuba, I saw no homeless people. Yes, you will see kids begging. There's a lot of beggars, but nobody's really homeless. They, they still have a home they go back to. I saw more homeless people in Toronto, in Canada. I see more homeless people on the streets of Toronto than I saw when I was in Cuba. Does that not tell you something? I'm not saying, I'm not saying their system is perfect either, but there's a little bit, I always say there's a little bit of truth to every lie. There's a little bit of a lie to every truth. No one system works perfectly. No one system is good or just good or bad. So you have to be willing to see the good in some things, right? And that to me was more important. I was sad that nobody could really be wealthier than anyone else. That's where capitalism comes in. But I was so rest assured to know that, okay, you know what? Maybe they, they're not having the most expensive meal. Maybe they're not having seafood, caviar, and foie gras, and all these fancy dishes. But they, the government gives them a, a, a ration. The government gives them at least like a bag of rice and bread and eggs and stuff every month. So they're not going hungry. Everyone in Cuba is is mostly fed. I mean, if, if they can at least get, you know, then they have the embargo thing. So sometimes they don't get imports and stuff. But in a perfect world, if they were getting imports and stuff, everyone would be fed. Everything is good, you know? So we really need to question our system. Is it working for us anymore and why? We understand what, capital, what capitalism is, what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the freedom and rights and liberties for people to go out there, work, attain private property, exchange goods and services, local, national, international scale, and grow wealth, grow wealth in the pursuit of happiness. And everyone's happy. And those that have more wealth, it becomes redistributed. We give it back to the poor, make sure that the poor is taken care of. That doesn't happen. And governments aren't making sure that this happens. Why? Because the governments are working in tandem with the rich people, the wealthy people that want to keep most of their wealth and don't want to give back. And if anything, it leads into this sort of really weird society where you have people that believe that they are the only ones that are deserving and everyone else is, you know, survival of the fittest, right? Because capitalism is about survival of the fittest. And so a lot of people at the top have this mindset that, well, I made it to the top it's, it's up to you to fend for yourself and figure it out. And you're just gonna, you know, all the poor people are gonna weed themselves away. And, you know, when we hear things of like, Elon Musk trying to bring people to, 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 to Mars and maybe potentially start like a new civilization there, it is almost like a, I'm trying to find the word. It's very elitist. It's like, we're the cool people, we're the cool group and you're not, you're out. And we're going to go create our own little world and you're not involved in. And it's just going to be a world of rich people living wealthy. And it's like, 
Why can't we all be, why can't we all have that? Why can't you help us all to have that? You know, there's always going to be rich and poor. So I'm not saying totally eliminate people being poor, but like, what do we want poor to look like? I want poor to look like, okay, maybe you don't have the money to, let's say, like, buy a flat screen TV, but you have enough money to have a roof over your head and food and water and clothes on your back. And it's not more than enough, but it's definitely better than nothing. And it's, it's definitely giving you the basic necessities to at least be alive. Like right now, so many people are stressed out because they have to figure out how they're going to pay their mortgage, how they're going to pay their rent. What if that was eliminated? Wouldn't you, like, there would just be such a burden lifted off your shoulder because you just know, like, okay, I don't have to worry about how I'm going to pay my rent, my mortgage. I'm going to have a meal today. I'm going to make sure that I know that the government is going to take care of me. I know that if I get sick, I can go to a hospital and get free health care. I know that if I want to go to school and get a degree or whatever so I can go get a good job, like, I can go to school for free. It's up to me if I want to go to school. You don't have to. You can decide to run a business instead and start a business too and make a lot of money from that. Everyone has choices. You have the option, but everybody's basic necessities are taken care of. So I don't know how that's going to look like. I'm not saying that I have the solutions, right? I just know that people who, who are making $100,000 right now are still finding that it's hard. It's hard out here, right? Not everyone can be a CEO. Not everyone wants to be a CEO. Not everyone can have a six-figure managerial job. Let's be honest. If everyone was a lead at their job and whatever department they're in, if everyone was a manager, who are the people under those managers? Who are people under the directors and the CMOs and the CEOs? Like Right now, we're seeing so much talk about getting the six-figure job, but like, is that realistic? Is everyone going to have the opportunity to have a six-figure job? Who's going to have the thirty, the, the 40,000, like the, the minimum wage jobs? And the people who have the minimum, the minimum wage jobs, they should be well taken care of. People who are making $40,000 a year, they would have no qualms if they didn't have to worry about rent and where they were going to get their food. I'd be okay with $40,000 a year. I $40,000 a year to do all the extra stuff that I want to do to travel. I, I'd be so happy. My quality of life would go up. And we also need to understand, and this is a whole other video, like wealth looks different to so much different people. We're told what wealthy looks like. We're told that you have to want the fancy car. You have to want to, having fun is buying a yacht and sailing year around with your friends and having these extravagant parties and living in these mansions with all these empty rooms and no one's in it but like it looks nice and aesthetically pleasing and so we should all work towards having these grand homes with empty rooms because it looks good on you craziness to me craziness to me and there are people on the streets that are homeless and like i cannot i, I don't understand how how you can how you can look yourself in the mirror and be happy about how the world is the way that it is today impossible impossible <sighs> capitalism is never going to work in theory it's it's gone too far if we're not going to have government step in for the everyday citizen and ensure that things are fair that the basic services and amenities are free to us and that there's still that motivation to want more money we need to create a system where there's still that motivation to want more money but it doesn't take away from people's ability to to have their basic necessities and their, their basic needs met. I shouldn't have to like sh not have food and eat or like live on the street because someone else chose to have more than me. Someone could choose to have more than me, but why do I have to suffer because of that? You know? So it really makes you think. So anyways, you know, I'm trying to wrap this up, but I do not have the answers. I don't think anyone, one person has the answers, ever will. But I think we just need to be having more of these discussions. A lot of people don't like talking about politics and stuff. But politics affects everyone. Because if you're the same one that, that complains about the system, politics affects you. You need to understand why you're in a system and why it is the way that it is. Why we're all slaves. Because we choose to be slaves. We choose to not want to understand why we're in the system that put us here in the first place and how to fight for change and to make things better 
So we're all a part of the problem because we're all participating in capitalism and we're not doing enough to fix it. We're not asking enough questions. We're not demanding enough justice. We are not holding our governments accountable. So we can't overthrow a system in a day, but we can at least start to think about creating a system that at least cares for everybody on a basic level where everyone has a roof over their head, basic meal each day, water, access to all these things. And, you know, one thing that, you know, studies have shown is that crime increases when there's increased poverty because there's limited resources. When more people are poor, and, and this is why we see in poor neighborhoods, there's there's gangs, there's, there's, there's more crime, and we see there's a lot more in like maybe, quote unquote, black neighborhoods systematically it's been positioned that way because out of slavery we, we never got any help so you know you, you rip people their 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 basic freedoms and rights and leave them to fend for themselves while you have an advantage like let's get real and then we're told to fix the f and then we're told to fix the problem i live it right so if nobody felt poor and had the basic needs to survive there would be less crime, there'd be less war, less competition, because everyone would have access to the same basic necessities. Everyone would realize that everything is for everyone. Land, when we look at the war going on right now, Gaza, Israel, everything's over money, it's land. That really is for everybody. God put us on this earth for us to share. This house that I'm in technically isn't even really my house, it's everyone's house, everyone is welcome, come but we don't see it that way. We see it as it's my property. You didn't work hard for it. And so I don't care about you. I only care about myself. And I only care about feeding my own family. And that creates a divide. Once you have a system that creates a divide, this is what it looks like, people. It's not a system that's based on love and caring for one another. So I'm gonna end it off here today. Like I said, I don't really have any solutions, but I did ask ChatGPT. Actually, I'm gonna pull it up. I did ask ChatGPT based on my argument, because <laughs> I had kind of like wrote this out before I was gonna record today. Based on my argument, what should we, what what are some of the solutions, right? So here are 10 things that ChatGPT suggested. And maybe these are things that we should be fighting for with our governments. When you go up there to vote, when you talk to your local politicians, these are things that we should be talking about. One, universal basic income. Hands down, we should have that. Providing every citizen with a guaranteed income to cover basic needs such as food, housing, and health care. We gotta take care of each other, people. I'm not saying that you're not allowed to have your billions of dollars if you want, but like have your billions of dollars, but make sure nobody's on the street hungry, no roof over their head. Cut that crap out. It shouldn't be like this, right? Universal health care, ensuring access to health care services for all individuals, regardless of their financial status. Education reform, implementing free or affordable education at all levels to promote equal opportunities for personal and professional development. Right? Some people can't go out there and get a good job because, like, they couldn't afford to go to university. How sad is that, you know? That we look at people and we're like, well, you didn't work hard enough. Maybe they didn't have a family that was equally resourced enough to go to school to have the job that you have. So a lot of these things we gotta think about people. It's not just because people don't work hard. Like some people really just are so lucky to have an advantage in life. And some people, yes, work hard. And some people have, like me, I'm so blessed to be put in front of the right people and to network and have these amazing opportunities. But, you know, I've worked hard just as much as the other person works hard. I has two, three jobs. And education, the reason why I'm a wealth coach today is because I, you know, I educated myself too. A lot of people don't understand, like, education is free. You can go online and learn these things. Everything I'm telling you guys now, I didn't, I went to school for it, but I didn't, it, it didn't, it didn't click in school. I learned all this myself the past couple of years, reading books, educating myself, under, trying to understand, like, what capitalism is. What is the system? Why are we here? Why are we where we are today, Right. So all the information is free online. You gotta, we, we gotta stop being slaves to the system. We gotta, we gotta free ourselves. Everything that you need to know is online. Educate yourself. Education really, knowledge is power. That is like one of my favorite quotes. Knowledge is actually so much power. Progressive taxation, establishing a tax system that redistributes wealth from wealthy to fund social welfare programs and reduce inequality. Worker protections, enforcing labor laws to ensure fair wages. 
safe working conditions, and job security for all workers. Number six, sustainable economic growth, fostering an economy that prioritizes environmental sustainability and social equity over unlimited growth. Then seven, social safety nets, establishing robust social safety nets, including unemployment benefits, disability support, and assistance for vulnerable populations. Eight, democratic governance, promoting participatory demo democracy and transparent decision-making processes to ensure that policies align with the needs and values of the population. And then it ends off by saying, ultimately, creating a system that prioritizes the well-being of all requires a collective effort, collective effort, not just one person trying to make the world a better place and a commitment to values such as empathy, equity, and solidarity, and love. That's one thing that ChatGPT is missing their love. It involves reimagining the purpose of economic systems beyond mere wealth accumulation, and focusing on promoting human flourishing and societal harmony. Thank you so much for listening to this today. If anyone listens to this, I would love for this to get a million views because I think this is such a powerful message and an important message for everyone to hear. We have so much power than we think we do. I'm not saying one person has to take on the world. We can't, one person can't alone. But when you have people to back you, when you have support systems, it can be done. Martin Luther King didn't do it alone. Nelson Mandela didn't do it alone. A lot of these people didn't do it alone. So... We don't have to do it alone, but we do have to talk with one another and get real about why there's so much suffering in the world today. What is the cause of it? People need to own up and say their apologies. Reparations, redistribution, all of these things are important. We need to be having these conversations. We start taking care of one another.